G'day, welcome to Partakers, we're on day two of the series, The Art of Tickling, addressing the question of how can traditional churches and those with older congregations use new media without excluding people. I did say it was going to be a series of four, but I've now decided it's going to be a series of two, and this will be the final part. We need to use the talents of people. I think that everybody has some measure of talent or knowledge that can be used including those who would ordinarily be dismissed from having any input into Christian worship and thinking, such as the elderly and those we earlier identified as being from the excluded group. We have to use people's talents, knowledge and wisdom, whatever it may be, and whoever they may be, and put them online using new media. We combine those talents, knowledge and wisdom with the methods of new media. Websites, blogs, mobile applications, social networks such as Facebook, Twitter, video and audio. We have to also ensure these people are safe. Don't disclose too much personal information about them. Also ensure they get some measure of feedback because that will encourage them to do more. Things that can be put on with new media are photography, poetry, Bible talks, testimonies, hobbies, interests and short stories. We could make an impact using new media. Another potential idea is new media days at your church or even your churches together in your local community. You could hold a regular event, say quarterly, where people can come and contribute something using new media. For want of a better name, call it a new media activity day or something like that, it would be a good way to get the younger members of the church to interact with the slightly less young members of the church. Using new media to build and encourage the churches builds stronger communities. Another idea of how to include people in this new media is to get them to pray for people you tickle and interact with online. Facebook and Twitter are rife with prayer requests from people. Take those prayer requests and sensitively get members of your church to pray. Get them interested. What a great way to include them. If possible, do ask whoever the person needing prayer. If you can ask others, though, as some people may not want you to. You don't need to give names or even initials. God knows their name. How do we do this? We need to get beside people. Somebody could get beside the, the people from the excluded group regularly and help them. This will build community. For example, they could record several podcasts or videos at the one time and then they are distributed over a longer period of time. Or it could be once a month or however regular you want it. You could have, so say, a regular monthly spot on your church blog so that on the 5th of each month people know who will be on. Here's a good example. In your church, I reckon the ladies there have amazing recipes. Why not garner the recipes, put them online, even with photographic evidence and taste tests? Another way we can include those who wouldn't necessarily want to be involved in new media. For example, on the 5th of November, Marjorie shares a recipe she's used for years. This particular recipe was recorded by George, who can't get out much, but has a fine, strong voice. Somebody has taken the time to be with these two people. They've taken Marjorie's recipe, photographed it, had it recorded by George on a smartphone, and put it online. How about that for a bit of tickling? The elderly in particular have a lot of knowledge and wisdom which can be distributed. We use people's skills. That retired chair, company chairman, who has invaluable advice she could give in regards to how the unemployed people in your church and community could do better to make themselves more employable. Writing interview and application tips, for example. Now here is a potential problem. How about those without access to technology? Well, there's the use of facilities in most libraries. Where I live, the libraries run courses for those wanting to know more about being online and using new media. Whatever the person's interest is, it can be put online. Well, how about this? We can pass on our older technology for people to use. We all upgrade at some point, 
so why not give on the obsolete technology to those who may be able to use it, give it to them freely, and even help them to use it. So how can we summarise the art of tickling? Get people to pray for those you interact with using new media? Get those same people to pray for you as you use and develop new media? Get beside people and get them using new media? Have regular new media activity days. We can do it. Let's go tickle. Now, you may well be here representing a large church. Go for it. You have the numbers. What is stopping you? Or you may be here representing a small church. You can go tickling with new media as well. Whatever church you represent, here's a bit of a radical idea. How about getting churches to work together in some way as a new media expression, tickling your local community, showing your community that churches can work together. Use your blogs and other new media to reach out into those same local communities. Be willing to participate in the new media activities of your community. Large numbers of local communities are represented on Facebook. Instead of starting a new page for your church or churches, be willing contributors on the community page there. Let's go tickle. Tickle with new media. Thank you.